Oh, she's talking about this chicken brain. Oh, how about you? You like the chicken brain? Huh? You don't like the chicken brain? No? Oh. Oh, she said it's good. Makes her hair shiny. <laughs> no, she didn't say that. I was just kidding. But, wow. I ain't gonna try it because... I don't like... I don't like any, I don't, Even if that's, I don't like any guts, no liver, gizzard, brain, I don't like feet because that walk around in the poop all the time, <laughs> they walk in the chicken poop poo, you only eat the, uh, intestines, no, what about the feet, no, that? no, it walk in the poop poo, like the feet poo no, the poo poo soak in the the poo poo so the poo poo soak into the meat. <laughs> I don't like. It. You can try also that like that. You can also this one, this one, this one. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Why? No, ma'am. You need to try the Why? Because you stay here in the Philippines. I don't. I, I just eat thank chicken breath. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I thought I'd play a funny song and dedicate it to all the young mothers in the world being out there with the little babies. I thought the song was funny, so here you go. I'm going to show some pictures I've been taking recently You can listen to this funny song. I love it. Why weren't you looking when I first cried? You should be staring at me. Give me look immediately. I picked a pie for attention. And now you've got to change me. Defiant for changes. Oh, don't you dare turn your back now. Or you'll wake up the demon in me. did some grocery shopping at Robinson's Place Mall and Robinson's Grocery Store is in there and it was almost 7,000 pesos but look all this toilet paper I got I'm gonna show you some of the roughly you no know, Clorox and bathroom cleaner voila and then this and Clothes cleaning, uh, stuff powder and liquid. What's this? Oh, meat, bacon, a couple bacon, three bacon, three pounds of bacon, and some other stuff that, uh, like yogurt and stuff that's wet. Your colts or something like that. And then there's a big box of stuff here. I'm not sure what that is. It's a mixture of stuff. And then, what is this? Bread. In the top. So, 7,000 divided by 57. And that's how much it is. It's less than 24,000, so. That's less than 140. So, not too bad. That's a big haul right there. Pretty big. Can't do that in America, but too bad. It'd be 300 bucks.
so right here's the list from those groceries. So let's go over this, give you an idea of uh, what the prices in the Philippines. Okay, so, wow. We can, can't even see the, okay, there you go. All right, so right here, that's Clorox bathroom cleaner. So you have to divide these by 56.25. This is a pack of cookies I like, 75. Coffee mate. It's just to show you what I got and we'll, just, we'll go, we'll price out the total. Uh, not sure what that is. A two unit strawberry. Oh, this is yogurt. This is a bigger thing, two bigger things of yogurt and two small yogurts. She likes to put in her lunch. Uh, spaghetti sauce, 104. Remember, divide by 56.4 for US dollars. So, hmm, PJA6, <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Dutch Mill Fruit, Fruit Exforzer. <laughs> Oh, that's the Dutch milk. It's a milk, Dutch milk. It comes in, uh, yes, four of them, I guess. Four or six of them. You know, like the little square boxes. I think it's six of them, even though it has a four there. Anyway, inboard butter, salted butter, 189. Dutch milk, there's another one of those berries. Oh, it is four pack, four pack. And how come that one's only 58 and that one's, this one's probably six, and this one's four. Come on, right there. I don't know, that's the same, that's the same. Okay, what is this, 400 grams of white? GRD US 400 grams of white, something. Not sure. Not sure at all about that. Hmm. Not sure about that either. There's a couple things I don't know. Hygienics is some uh, <clears throat> antibacterial soap that I bought, hand soap, a bar of it just to try it out. I really like it. Uh, it suds us up real good, and it's got a just a faint scent that doesn't make me itchy. So I like that. So that's the Joy Lemon, um, 540 milliliters of dish soap. So that's not too bad. Um, Magic Syrup, Magic Syrup. I don't, that's MS, MSG, I think. Uh, neutral Orange, 240 milliliter. Minute made to, I don't know, not sure what that is, some kind of drink for rain. Not sure what that is. Mod and 10 is plus 27. Maybe uh, Mott's apple juice. That's cafe. Oh, yeah, this is coffee, instant coffee. That's why it's expensive. Not really. It's, yeah, I guess it is expensive for. It's like nine dollars or something. That's the yogurt. Here's more yogurt. Me and Rain both like that. Pente, collagen, some kind of beauty products. Corn beef, uh, three corn beefs, one hundred two a piece. So that's three, three. Uh, Corn beef, we like to have that for breakfast with eggs and rice. Pond, some more beauty product. Don't know, probably beauty product. Powdered AB, I'm not sure what that is. Lemon, lemon, orange. Oh, these are some kind of drinks that Rain got in a can. Coconut oil, probably beauty product. Oh, no. Coconut oil for um, cooking. 
and Solo Apple. That's a six pack of Solo Apple. I like those. Smart Fod White Cheddar. I guess it's cheese. Two for 421 a piece. Sank, Sank and BT. I'm not sure what that is. What is that? Virginia honey bacon. Oh, that's probably, that's probably bacon too. Virginia honey bacon. Two, six, 30, that's for two pounds right there. So that's about 20, 21 dollars or something like that. Your cult, uh, cultured milk, that's delicious too. I like that, me and Rainbow like that. There's two of those for 50 a piece. There's uh, like six little jugs of it in there. Five or six. Zonrox, that's more Clorox. That's just, that's just like Clorox, straight Clorox. So the grand total was 6,856. 846, 50 centavos. So we'll knock that centavo off there and we'll do the 6,846 pesos. Let's see, see how much that is. So in the market, we'll buy fresh chicken, pork, and beef, and eggs from the market so it'll be local and fresh. So that was the cost of the groceries right there. And that's the exchange rate for today. And $121.71 USD. Not a bad deal. You know, like I said, we didn't get but three pounds of bacon and three cans of corned beef for breakfast. But we'll get the fresh chicken and fresh pork and fresh beef right at the market. Fresh off the chopping block. So there you go. Not bad. Anyway, it was raining like crazy. You know, I had to go to the open market. So I had to break out my handy dandy uh, Kalana Shipyard raincoat. I got this for Christmas um, several years ago. See, it's got Kalana Shipyard written on the back there. I'll give y'all some free advertising. Kalana Shipyard, North of Virginia. Yeah, it's a good place to work, man. CNC lays, mill machines. Uh, top of the line machines and the best people in the world work there. So there you go No other people are better than these people and uh, they got top of the you know uh, CSC machines lays brand new ones and uh, They got an oven for stress relieving so you don't have to mess with that. You just put it in there Roll the door. So let me get out of this coat. Wow. you like that's a nice coat though. Thanks for the Christmas present and uh, thanks for the house on the ocean, Kalana Shipyard. Cause all that overtime you gave me, I didn't need it. Cause I fashioned my life so, uh, all, you know, all I needed was $25 an hour, which I made way more than that. All I needed though, it was $25 an hour, eight hours, five days a week and I could make it. Anything above that went in the bank. So let me show you what I got. Let me take this off and show you what I got. So, as far as the wet market, <sighs> this thing's hot, man. Uh, you get inside and when you're out there in the rain, it's pouring down rain, it's not hot because the rain can keep you cool. But once you get in here, ah, right. yikes. All right. See, so you saw the other list of groceries, so let me show you what I got for 990 pesos. So, oh, these, this is not included in the 990 pesos. I got some red onions, a big bag of red onions. She told me a quarter kilo, but it's more. That's 25 pesos for, uh, that's 50 cent for six big red onions. And here's a kilo of ground pork. Let me get the plates out that I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to put this in the refrigerator. And then she's gonna take care of dividing it up and doing what she's gonna do with it. 
freeze some of it and keep some of it. So that's a kilo of ground pork. And here is a kilo of pork chops. Yummy, that's my favorite right there, woo! Well, the ground pork is gonna be, oh no, that's pork kassim. This is a kilo of ground pork, I mean, a kilo of pork chops. I cannot even fit it on that plate. Wow, see, there you go. That's my pork right there. You can't even fit it on here, look at all that. Three kilos, that's 6.6 .6 pounds. And, you know, I don't know much metric, but I know kilos 2.2 .2 pounds. <laughs> don't ask me why I know that, but I know that. Anyway, let me get that in the fridge and I'll show you the chicken. Now. I'm not gonna take that all out of the bag. That's two big old whole chickens. Fresh chickens. So, not bad at all. Can't go wrong with fresh. So, that's two whole chickens. Oh, that was a separate price. Oh, I got the receipts for that. We'll check that out. So, that's the uh, pork meat stall right there. Three kilos, you see that? says carne but boy but at least i told you what it was 990 pesos so we're going to add that to the other price list and uh, this is the two chickens and it's 404 pesos see right there so that gave me some change for i usually give this lady that's in the market uh give her my change but i didn't see her these uh, handicap. So there you go. We'll add that up right now. So from the fresh market is $9.90 for a kilo of pork chops, a kilo of kasim, and a kilo of ground pork. So that's three kilos. And then it's 404 pesos for two chickens. And that's divided and that's a uh, 0 0.25, 25 pesos for onions. So that's that, and that's the exchange rate, 25, 56.31, says so 24.76 for the fresh meat. Three kilos of pork and two whole chickens and a bag of onions. Add that to what I went to the grocery store uh, yesterday, 121 121.71 equals 140, 146.47 cent uh, USD. So this is the prices at the laboratory I just got the physical at and uh, just divide the, all these prices by 56.24 and that'll be US dollars. So that's the exchange rate today, 56.24. Look at these good prices. <laughs> Get in the pot. Guys are at the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Manon. Sorry, Manon. See how I cook it a little bit already? Because it's still hot. It don't take much to cook egg. Yeah, yeah, it's cooking it. I'm just sitting out here because uh, I just wanted to watch the road for a change instead of watching the sea. Watch the cars, watching the wheels go round and round. How I love to watch them go. <laughs> you know, I'm easily amused. Look at those wheels rolling. Woo! I actually got this shirt in Florida, in Orlando, Florida. This is not off a shelf somewhere. You could buy one of these probably anywhere, but not an original one. Not from Orlando. 
Yeah. Hey, hey, that looks similar, doesn't it? I need a red bandana. That's it. That's all I need. Anyway, uh, we've been waiting for my daughter's uh, teeth to, baby teeth to finish. She had a couple more baby teeth. And they, uh, in America, they said we couldn't get her braces until they came out. But so they finally came out, and we got her down there because it's a uh, holiday right now. But the dentist was working, so that's a big expense. And um, also, my daughter, my wife went too to get some braces, and we. I wanted to do that so that every time you know there's periodical adjustments so every time there's an adjustment i could take them both at the same time and uh it will save a lot it's not uh it's only in belize belize is uh where the dentist office is so it's like uh three fifths of the way to san jose but you know it's only like 35 minutes 40 minutes instead of an hour 50 or 60. So, and it's a really good dentist. Uh, the braces look just like a miracle. So. Uh, there was a difference. My daughter is going to be harder because her canine is, her canine baby tooth crowded her um, permanent uh canine to uh, go, you know, the point of it made it go a lot long distance and so the long farther distance it is away from where it should be the more it's going to cost so with both of their braces and adjust adjustment for my daughter for three years you know because they got a continue guiding the teeth, you know, tightening and loosening, this and that, to make each individual tooth go a certain way. You know how the braces go. So, my daughter is 65,000 and my wife is 45,000. So 110,000 pesos divided by 57 is, 110,000 pesos is, $1,929 US dollars for braces for both. My daughter will have to get adjustments for three years and my wife will have to get adjustments for, I don't know how long, but she said, because hers are only 45,000 and my daughter's is 65,000. Hers are easier. So I'm looking at it, 65 and 45, it's probably gonna be two years of adjustments for my wife. So, that's not a bad price. I don't know how much. There's no, I don't have any insurance. That's out of pocket. Out of pocket braces for my wife and my daughter. Top of the line. You know, she trained in uh, U.S. and uh, e, uh, e, 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 well, the uh, Arab country over there, Dubai, like over in that area but some training, she went to college, she got a master's here, and then went and finished in America, there, I think Korea too. She's been all around, she really knows her stuff. She's in charge of um, three areas here on this island, which would be like half of the island. That's her responsibility. And uh, she just works on the side. Uh, to work on us on the weekend, you know, her regular job. It doesn't interfere with her regular job at all. You know, she got her own on the side business. So, one thousand nine hundred twenty-nine dollars. If you have two kids that need braces, you can't tell me. Even with insurance, you're going to pay way more than that. Way more, and then add in how much you paid for insurance, man. It's a big ripoff. It's a big ripoff. You know, the whole health insurance scam and dental scam over there is unbelievable. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Uh, I just want them to have good teeth, you know, before I kick the bucket. 
until uh, I fill all my bucket lists up and I kick the bucket. And uh, they're gonna be, have their full wings and ready to fly. That's my, that's all I care about. That's all I care about. And uh, that's it for right now. I think I'm gonna go in, get in front of a fan, get a little muggy. So, subscribe, comment. Very few, hardly any of my friends from the US that I grew up with in Dunedin or Western Branch or anything like that. Very few of y'all ever comment on my videos anymore. I wish you would just say something. Say something to me. You know, say, hey Rodney, I don't like that side walk that you got going down the side of the house. It could be something negative. Just say it. All right. Put a little bit more drone in your area. I haven't been flying a drone because I got a, instead of a 11 Pro Max, you know, instead of 11 Pro Max, Apple Pro Max, I got the new 15 Apple Pro Max. And the port changed from Lightning to C. And I don't have a dongle that fits, but you know, I had to change everything around, but I just got one. Actually, I got two in case one don't work. And so I'll be doing some drone footage soon. I gotta still test it out. That's why I haven't, I forgot all about the fishing, carrying my fishing line out there with the drone since I don't have a boat. Hi. It was raining pretty hard earlier. You see I got that directing some water off to the side to ease up on these drains. It's still not good enough. And you see the curbs right there on both sides that drain the water off uh, that gets pushed to the side. You see how there's not much water? The driveway is crowned. Also, it has a sweeping motion towards the edges. And you see how much difference it makes, look. So that's what these curbs catch and direct away from these drains just off. Those are, I made them up there because that's behind the fences, which it's, it's just gonna, it's not gonna have anything to do with my foundation of my house or anything. It's gonna stop it and soak into the ground back there. The same thing with this side, you see the river over there near the edge. See that? It's flowing. So up there, none of that is coming off the road because up there I got a big curve. You see that? There's a curb that goes all the way across so that the water from the road cannot come down the driveway. So I just widened the drains and put these grates in to keep the big leaves off. I'll show you. See those grates? And I increased the size of the pipes and the drain too. They were three inches. They're now four. The pipe is four down there. And uh, also that pipe was connected to in a Y right below the driveway, it was connected with the Y from the roof water that came off down a, a different pipe. And this drain made a Y under here and went down one three inch pipe. But now it's four inches. The one coming off the roof is still three, but this one is four. And, it, and we took the Y out and made two independent ones. They just go to the ditch, the drainage ditch on either side. This one goes on the left side and that one goes on the right side. So, but you, you see the water is increasing. Now, you know, it gets like, the rain gets like twice as bad. And uh, I'm not happy yet. Right here, my next plan is right here at this, you know, those curves direct that water off, but there's still a river after those curves. You see that? That's just what's landing on the driveway. That's it. 
and it's um, some of it is coming from the middle of the driveway up there and get past that curve to in addition to this, but not that much. Basically, it's what's landed between that curve and this green one. So, my plan is right where this green one is, there's going to be a bucket, a five gallon bucket, square bucket that you saw me make the other day outside of this wall with a pipe going back behind the fence, right where that water's landing. And it's going to, it's going to, um, it's gonna just be hanging, but it's gotta go downhill so it can't go with the driveway. It's gotta go downhill to the fence. And then, um, there's gonna be a 90 after the fence to go wherever I want it to land. Back behind the, my uh, perimeter fence. And the same thing is gonna be true with this you know, not that first one, but that second one right there. There's going to be a bucket outside that I can put these green things when there's a typhoon. I could put these uh, green things. I got a bunch of them, and they're longer than that, three times that long. I could put a long one out to the center there and a long one out to the center there and divert all the water from that green up off this into those buckets down in, in a pipe that goes on the other side of the fence. That's the plan. Anyway, nothing's happened since that first time water came in the garage here. But no water has happened since that either. And also another plan is, I think a lot of that water while I was sleeping blew in here through these doors onto the um, garage, which is, this garage is actually, um, slightly downhill going the opposite of this driveway. It's actually coming down here, but it's very slight because I didn't think it was going to be a problem really. But I underestimated the tropical rains. Like I said, this is, this is really nothing. But anyway, I got tarps I'm going to put up to cover these doors during a typhoon. And uh, instead of coming in, it's just gonna, uh, the wind is, the rain is not gonna be able to blow through the door into the garage. That should also help. Anyway, I'm not prepared for a typhoon yet. <laughs> anyway, where I lived in America, this is Portsmouth, Virginia. It, it, going way out, it'll say Norfolk, but it's right next to Norfolk. So that's the um, planned neighborhood that I lived in. You know, kind of uh, little teeny yards and everything. And this is where the brainwashing starts at, these grids. Anyway, that, that was my old house right there, where that red car... Uh, at. That's a new roof I put on there so I can sell it easy. Yeah. Here's the little bushes I used to trim right there in the front yard. And that red car is living there, I guess. So that's the garage in the backyard there, too. Kept all my junk. Anyway, that's the beehive that I lived in in Virginia, USA. And look, the only reason nothing is there, that's a swamp. The Great Dismal Swamp. <laughs> that's part of it. It goes all the way to Florida. Somewhere through there. Anyway, that was it. You see Virginia right there. You'll see Norfolk in a second. See it? That's Porsche's right next to that. Norfolk side. Norfolk dot. You see Washington, D.C., New York, Boston going up. 
going down to North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. This is where I live now. Oh yeah. Panay Island. You look at the difference. No, no computer generated plan. Row houses stuffed all up under underneath each other. That's my house right there. With, that's the driveway that y'all will recognize with my picture. So I have a picture of that. This is Google Earth. There you go. <laughs> you won't see another house like that anywhere. I designed that house. I designed it and. You know, when I got here, the engineers here just, uh, I didn't design, you know, how many bars go in each column that you pour the concrete in because I didn't know what their rule in this area was. So, and I didn't really want to do that detail. I just wanted to do the aesthetic design. So, a lot better. <laughs> See, like next door to me, their design is completely different. It's not like this box houses in America. We feel like, I don't know. It's got something to do. It's just like, uh, wow, people get hypnotized in the grid or something like that. I mean, the way I, I heard on the news, you know, all the news channels going, oh, He's sharp as a tack, he's sharp as a tack, and all of them are saying it in unison. It's a brainwashing tactic. I swear if they all said, uh, if all those news channels said, oh, the postman, no, let's not use him. Uh, the, the farmers are all evil. If all the stations and they all got together, 50% uh, of, almost 50% of the population would uh, start persecuting farmers because uh, some people are more easily hypnotized. This period. So look at all these dragonflies! Wow, mosquito eaters. Oh, y'all gonna get fat. Glad to see that. Well, it's picking up plastic time again. There's my bag. Here's my handy dandy picker upper. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I thought I would clean, you know, like I usually do down this wall and then that way. And I thought one day I would get to the um, peninsulas in my cove. But unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, the tides and the uh, storms and the wind just keep filling up this one section. So I'm just gonna wait for it to come to me. And you can see some of it out there. Here, I'll zoom in on it. I already picked up a little bit. See there, there's some kind of plastic ball. And there's stuff everywhere. There's a blue plastic, there's a bottle right there. Some blue plastic there. There's a couple bottles at the end of this trench thing anyway I'm going to pick it up as far as I can get I got a bigger bag so I should be able to pick up more trash so it's hit me with some sprinkles so I better get busy anyway like I said I got a little bit of plastic in here now see all right 62 is on the rescue yeah, I just picked up a paint can. See it? Look. Look at all I uh, picked up about three flip-flops. Look at all this. Or you know on the outside of this fence it may be a trough. And like that cut right there, that's a natural off the mountain. It brings a lot of waste down here. Let me continue. Just wanted to show you some of it. That's another paint can right there. Or you know, there's all kinds of stuff. I'm not gonna make it far. Look at all that stuff on the beach. I can't have it. Hey, Greenpeace and 
uh, thinking of the little guy, you know, these people up here, they need a job. So, uh, sponsor the channel and I'll get all this cleaned up whenever it comes here from that cove to, from that peninsula to that peninsula. We'll start with this. And the more volunteers that we get, I mean, they'll volunteer for some pay. They're not gonna, they're not gonna volunteer terribly pick it up, but they will work for pay. So I don't want to make any money, and I will show you where the money goes in the video. Every every time I take a video, I'll show you where your your sponsorship money went. Every peso of it. All right, come on, Greenpeace, step up. Me, I work for free, but I will have to pay all the volunteers, at least some. So, so I got me a bunch of trash right there. And uh, there's a lot out there because, you know, the currents have been sweeping back and forth. They go one way, then the other. And uh, stuff gets caught in the nook and crannies. But uh, that's a pretty heavy one right there there's some heavy stuff in there like shoes sandals and flip-flops those heavy flip-flops and uh there's one thing you can do to keep garbage out of the sea keep your flip flip-flops and other shoes out of the tide line because that's a lot of the garbage that's in there an amazing amount of shoes where you know you set your shoes two feet from where the biggest waves coming up and then you go in for a swim five minutes later a bigger wave comes and washes your shoes out to sea <laughs> so just a little bit of thinking can uh, keep a lot of it from happening just leave your shoes way up on the beach as far as you can. Oh, now I gotta walk the stairway to heaven to the trash can up there. See you. I'll see you on the flip flops in there. I'll see you on the flip flop. <laughs> see, you on the, see you on the crop. So, I just made it up here with the garbage. And there it is, right there, in my homemade trash can here, trash bin. It's not like America, it's not automatic. Somebody's got to dig it out of here. So that's why I tip down. But look here, the plastic thing, you know, to vent, vent the fumes from the garbage so it don't get too rotten in there. I put this there, but as you can see, a cat can get in there, get in and out of there. And so I don't want anybody tearing up my bags, so I'm going to fix it. Put something more stable there. All right, I'm gonna measure it right now. So up there, the legs were 10 and 22, and the hypotenuse was 22 feet, 24 inches. So that's the one we're gonna make the triangle. 22 on this first leg. Let me get that done. I'll show you the triangle. Wing. My trash bin's alive. Look at all that. But uh, I should have painted that, brushing up. <clears throat> Inside on the bottom, you see the, the triangle I was making the other day to replace this piece of plastic. Because this plastic, see how brittle it gets? In the, in the uh, sun, plastic's like that. You need to paint plastic, really, to keep it from getting brittle like that. UV, even PVC, uh, that's why I painted all that PVC. So I just put it on there with some um, zip ties. That's enough to keep a cat out of there. Anyway, my trash is alive, look at that. It don't even hardly stink because you know, this, it stink a little bit at a time with all these vent holes. But water got in there and got on this bottom panel like this and ru 
rusted it out. I need to put some a rust converter on that and paint that before it gets a hole in it. I got to already replaced the bottom pan. Next time the garbage man comes, I'll get the um, power washer and wash the inside out and then take that, cut that bottom pan out and put a new one in there. Cause I could do that. Look, this walkway, I just, and look at that fence. I know y'all remember if y'all watch the videos, I just really cut all those vines, it's ridiculous. And these, I got them all out off the step and look at it all now. It's a jungle out there. Later. 